So having worked with basic pixel access and color tracking, let's add some other cool tracking options to our tool belt. And the next one we're gonna look at is optical flow. This is a really cool method that was actually first um, sort of figured out in the 1940s um, and has become an important part of computer vision. Essentially what we're able to do is take a 2D plane in this case, our video, and compare previous frames and be able to uh, detect not just what regions in the image have movement, but in what direction that movement is having. It's really cool. Um, so for our version here, I've got, again, my basic template, and I've got this um, additional JavaScript file called flow.js. So this is modified from an example I found um, by Kyle McDonald. And I've gone ahead and just tidied it up a little bit, cleaned it up um, and changed a little bit of how it works that I think will just make it easier for you. It's a little more geared towards P5.js. Um, but again, the cool thing here is that this is all JavaScript. There's nothing super fancy or, I mean, it's complicated. I don't really know how this all works, but it definitely is, um, is pretty cool. So um, the flow will give us these different zones. So it divides our image into a grid. And for each one of those grids, we have a position, we have um, a movement, which is the um, plus or minus in the X or Y direction. And then um, I've also added code for you to get the angle and the magnitude or the intensity of that motion from that data as well. So let's look at how we add this. Um, I did add this flow.js to my index page so that I have access to that. And um, let's go ahead. So I've got my video. I'm also gonna need a couple of the variables to start. I'm gonna need a variable to keep track of the overall flow. And um, I also need a, a way to keep track of the previous frame. So I'm gonna create a variable called previous pixels. And then um, we need a grid size to work with. So we're going to divide, we could do this by pixel, but it's going to be super slow and not actually that helpful. So I'm going to divide my um, video into 24 pixel um, sections. Okay. So um, I'm actually going to go ahead and make my canvas the same size as my video here. And then after we create the video, I'm going to make my flow calculator. So flow will equal new flow calculator at the current grid size. Um, and that's all we need to do to get this set up. Then in our draw, um, we need to be able to access the pixels so that we can keep track of the previous frame. Um, optical flow works by comparing frames over time and being able to extrapolate motion. It can't do it from a single frame. So I'm gonna say video.load pixels. And um, I, again, kind of, we covered this in the last example. I need to know if my video is currently playing because there's a little lag. So I'm going to say if video.pixels.length is greater than zero, so are there pixels, um, then I can create this um, previous frame. So I'm going to say, oh, actually, so I want to check to see if that already exists, um, because we need two frames to be able to do this. So if there's pixels, um, if there's video, and if previous pixels exists, um, then I want to um, compare these. Now there's an additional function built in here to all this code that checks to see if two video frames are the same. We may or may not need this, but I think this is smart and it was included in the original example. So I'm gonna say if same previous pixels, video.pixels, if those two are the same, oh, um, and then I'm gonna do you know what, I do not remember what these arguments here are. Uh, four must be, uh, yeah, that's um, the number of elements per color and then the width of the image. So yeah, this is the problem with working with code other people write. It's cool, it's a quick way, but sometimes you don't know what's going on. Um, in this case, I probably should have figured this out first. Anyway, um, you don't need to worry about this too much here because you know, it's just not going to be super important. Um, so if they are the same, we're just going to return. We're going to quit. Otherwise, we want to do our calculation. And so flow, we do flow.calculate. And this will be previous pixels, video.pixels. Uh, and then it needs the dimensions. Let me just make sure I got it right. It's a very long line. Uh, video.width and video.height. OK, so this is where all the magic happens. This is where the flow gets calculated between the previous frame and the current frame. Okay, 
Once that's done, um, I'm going to do all of this inside this command, this if statement here, because I want to make sure I'm not trying to do stuff and throw errors if the video isn't loaded yet. So then I could say image video. That way we can see it. And then now we can visualize the zones. And this is really where you can be creative. This first part is just doing the calculation. Um, so I want to know if flow.zones exists. If the flow zones are here, then we're ready to go. And then we can go through them. So they're just a zone, or sorry, they're, they're just a variable, uh, a list. And um, we can use this interesting for loop syntax that I don't know that we've covered before. Um, you could use let i equal zero, i is less than flow.zones.length, et cetera. Um, this is a shorthand version. Um, and if you read it like a sentence for zone of the list flow.zones, um, this is a really nice shorthand way. Now we have access to this variable and we don't have to use the index for this. Um, but you could certainly do it the other way. Um, cool, then we can draw these. So let's do a push, oops, push translate to zone.position.x, zone.position.y, rotate zone.angle. And you know what? I'm just going to paste this because you get the idea. Boom. So we rotate by the angle. I'm doing some stroke stuff here. And then I'm drawing little arrows. So this first line here is just from the middle of that grid point. Um, at the right angle and the length magnitude is like the intensity. And then I'm drawing the little arrow points here. So let's run this to see if I forgot. Oh, we do need one more thing. Um, then we need to set the previous pixels to our current pixels. And to do that, we have another little sort of helper function. Um, previous pixels equals copy image video.pixels previous.pixels. OK, let's see. We don't get any errors. Great. So now as I move around, you can see these arrows following me. You can see that they point in the right direction. We do have a problem. If I look in the background where nothing is changing, it's still it's drawing these arrows that are going all crazy because um, there's not really any movement there. So the angle of, of movement is sort of random. Um, so I think I can improve this system a little bit here by saying if zone dot magnitude, the intensity of that, is below a certain threshold, then skip it. So I'm going to make one more variable here, ignore threshold. And if that's true, we're going to continue. Continue means just keep going on the loop. So it's going to skip this code and just loop back around and keep going. So let's set this value up here. And I think maybe 10 is a good place to start, we can see. That's pretty good. Maybe we want to make it a little higher. We might even want to make this, I don't know, half the grid size. This would be something you could experiment with. And it's going to depend on the noise in your camera. But this looks pretty good. So now you can see as I move, yeah, these arrows follow me. They're in the direction of my motion, which is pretty incredible. I mean, the fact that this is possible, um, again, just using JavaScript is really crazy and really cool. Um, Let's see, other ways that we can improve this. So, I mean, I'm sure that you could come up with other cool stuff. This is really where all the work, the cool work happens. So just drawing arrows is not that exciting, but you could plug this into a particle system or um, have shapes move around on the screen if you bump into them or whatever. Um, oh, one thing that you might wonder is, how am I supposed to know about flow.zones and the magnitude and all this stuff? Um, how am I supposed to know what parameters I have available? Well, there's two ways. One is you could look inside the class here. So I've created this flow zone class. And in this case, it's pretty simple to see it. And um, you know, you might have to do a little research to understand what mag means or you know, a little deduction to figure out pause. Um, another way though, because sometimes this is hidden in a minified library or something you can't really see. Um, so you could do console.log. And this is a really awesome sort of detective way of doing this. Um, now I'm going to get a, um, it's going to do it over and over. So I'm going to put no loop here so that we can just see this once. Oh, now it says it's undefined. It looks like, uh, let's move this here. So if in the first frame, for example, you know, we don't have a previous frame, so you can't have those flow zones. Um, there we go. So now <laughs> I'm paused looking super freaky. Um, you can 
make this a little bigger. You can expand this array. I can see that there's 51 activated zones that each one is an object and it includes the info here. And this is a really great way of trying to figure out what format stuff is stored in. Um, you know, is it X and Y position or is it like a two dimensional list or whatever? Um, but yeah, this is optical flow. It's really awesome. And um, it's fast too, like this works really well. It's totally keeping up with me. And I don't know, I love seeing all these arrows dashing around on the screen. Um, yeah, we'll look at a couple more examples next.